third phase of the moon. Third. Welcome back to the third phase of the moon. My name is Blake Cousins, and we're live tonight taking your calls from around the world in regards to the UFO phenomenon. Third Phase of the Moon rated the top UFO channel around the world with over 107,000 subscribers and peaking over 70 million views, making us the top place to share your report and get the information out to the world live right now. And if you have any questions for Third Phase of the Moon you want to report a sighting, you can call into 1-347-934-0378. The month of August has been a busy month right here at Third Phase of the Moon. I think we've gotten more videos this month than any time in history. And we wanted to give our regards to Dr. Jesse Marcel, Jr., famous Roswell crash, last person to touch the evidence of a flying saucer debris. We wanted to give condolences to the family for the loss of Dr. Jesse Marcel, Jr. We actually had and spoke with Jesse Marcel Jr. on Third Phase of the Moon, and it was the last interview he did, and uh, it's quite uh, inspiring just to hear what he has to say on the interview. So if you want to listen to it, you could go to UFO Sightings' last interview with Dr. Jesse Marcel Jr., the Roswell Crash, New Mexico. Now, we're taking calls around the world live, and we just got a call recently, about two minutes ago, reports of a of UFOs right now being seen and witnessed. Welcome to Third Phase of Moon. Can you tell us where you're calling from and what's going on right now? You say there's UFOs outside Min- your home right now? Yeah, I'm in Minnesota. Oh, I'm okay, so you. are they... So tell me, what they're out here are every, They're out here every night, and every time I try to take a video, um, they flash red, green, yellow, and... They get lower and lower every night. My husband's seen them when he comes home from work by about 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, They're out here right now. Matter of fact, I'm outside. I won't come out here without my dogs. <laughs> um, wow. My dogs bark when there's something out here. And I've, I've been told not to you know, recognize or try to communicate with these things. Um... I don't know. He's right there, right there. I mean, I, I every time I try to take a picture, my batteries go dead in my camera. Um, Do you have a other? You have I have your some there? pictures. I have I have sent you some pictures before. My husband's what about freaked a video out. Camera? My whole family's any? freaked out. Well, you should get some of your family members. Are they there right now? Can they describe no. to us what you're uh, what no. you're seeing right now? No, but the, my friends, my family, everybody that's been here has seen them. They're here every night at a certain time, every night. Well, we got to get fact, some help. One right behind me. There's like seven out here right now. One. I don't like going out in my yard alone. Um, because it's dark out here. Um, one, two. Three. The one that's normally here isn't here. He's behind a tree, and I'm not wandering behind a tree right now by myself. Um, wow. Are they stationary? Are they moving? Are they? Uh, they, they, are, they, they move. They move. I want to try to get pictures of them. Oh my God! There's a really, really bright one, and he's right above the trees, and he's getting closer. Um. When Without I giving try, the exact of, from of where he, you are. It's people in your I'm, I'm area. I'm in Minnesota. I mean, I'm in past. I'm out west, Minneapolis. People so, can go outside right now and go look. So I mean, I've called friends. In Minneapolis, like, in Minneapolis, right now, if they're if they're there, if they look oh in, my God, uh, he's what? flashing his freaking lights at me right now, and he is. That's west. That's west. And then wow, there's another get, one. Uh, we got to get mean, people's I, eyes on the skies over there. Many, many. I, if I called the police, they'd think I'm an effing nut. I mean, well, I wouldn't call in the police, but I would suggest... No, but you know what I mean. I mean, I wouldn't know. I've called my family. They've seen them. They tell me to leave them alone <laughs> because they flash when I come outside. Um, well, I really don't think you would have... Um, my uh, husband whether you leave them alone or not, they're going to be doing what they're doing, I'd imagine. But... Uh, 
kind of interesting. If you could get some, you know, multiple cameras going, your families together. They because kill I know my camera. I, like, every time I take a picture, I get them in the picture, and then when I look at it later, it's not there. I don't know how to describe that. But that one is getting really close. I'm home alone. I might be going back in. <laughs> um, I've sent well, you, you some pictures. Um, I do have some pictures, but they're hard to catch because when I try to zoom in on them, they're like jumping all over the place, and they look like little ziggles, like wiggly lines, or y- you know what I'm trying to say. Certainly. Well, it's best to get a tripod, a steady, steady shot, so there's not that uh, squiggly line. That, you know, I have kinda... a cast in my leg. I'm just not like I'm going to be getting too close to anything. You stand by. You just stay by. We're going to get back I'm, I'm to I'm just going to stand by. I, I'm just, I'm just going to listen. So, and I'm going to stay out here for as, as long as I possibly calls. can without getting too scared. <laughs> We're taking more calls from around the world. Area code 254. Welcome to Third Phase Moon. Do you have a UFO you want to report? Have you captured anything in the past? Hello. Hello. You're live right on Third Phase of Moon Radio. Welcome. This is Blake Cousins. Hey, Blake. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Ronnie Dawson. I'm a North Central Texas uh, oil field worker, and I escaped the attention, attempted deduction in March the 2nd of uh, 2011. And, uh, I you were actually uh, abducted? Uh, I believe I believe I, it was an attempted abduction. Well, tell us about I work it. In, I work in the crude oil uh, I work in the oil field as a crude oil transport driver, a hazmat driver. And uh, we work days and we work nights. And I've been seeing, uh, we've been seeing a lot of this stuff. And, uh, and Kate had news over here that Abilene uh, had been reporting that they called them mystery lights. And, we, and we've been seeing some of the working nights out there. And uh, I had three reports uh, to move on. And uh, they asked me to kind of catch some pictures. And I was trying to catch the pictures of this thing. It's just lights on the trees, and like we've been seeing a lot of. And uh, but this time uh, the lights started moving at me, and uh, I was up on top of a tank battery, which is a oil storage facility. And this thing came in really close, uh, within a hundred yards of me. And uh, well, can you describe? Was it a large craft? Did it, did it make any noise? You know, air code two five four. Your your. Uh, Reception is kind of breaking up. If you could try and call back, and we want to get you back on. We want to take a look at your video. I just could, didn't get your uh, didn't get that title. If if let's check the connection again. Are you still there, two five four? Yes, yes. Okay, that's okay, a lot I'll, better. I'll okay, try to call you back. No, you're good. You're good. Don't don't call back. Let's just um, give me the name of the of the title of the UFO that you uploaded on YouTube, so we could take a look. Uh, I I have a couple of videos out there called Coleman, Texas UFO Exclusive. Okay, we're going to take a look. Okay. okay so, is this you, Ronnie? Yes. Ronnie Dawson on the phone? Is That's this me. Ronnie on the phone? Yeah, this, this is Ronnie. Okay, Ronnie, stand by. We're going to take a look at your video. Hey, may we, let's just say, we'd sure like to share this with Third Phase Moon. We're about to take a look at this. Would it be okay? Absolutely. Okay, so the video I have is Coleman, Texas, UFO exclusive. It's a 6 minute 34 second of video, correct? Yes, that's uh, that's one of two that I have. The other one is a little bit 15 minutes long. Okay, well, we're going to take a look. And, and we're looking at this uh, craft. So what is what are we looking at right now? There's, like, you're pointing at an orange streak of light what was what are we looking at here yeah when this thing came in uh, uh there were some lights and i couldn't see the craft behind it as it as it got closer and closer uh i could see these stretchy lights uh the light stretched almost like taffy and then when it got closer i could start to see the outlines of the craft and then a huge white light came on and and i looked up on my head and i seen the round disc shaped Crap! Fixing to start moving over my location, and uh, it sent me into hiding. Uh, I hid behind an oil field separator, and I captured a picture, 
And in that picture, in the white light, when we look at it harder, we can see an image. There's a, a, what we believe is an alien standing in the open portal. Well, the, the picture we're looking at right now, it's a bit hard to, you know, see exactly what we're looking at here. Obviously, with your own eyes being on location in the, in the dark and, you know, having street lights is one thing, but trying to capture it on film can be quite tricky at times. Let's oh, see. Yeah, so, and, so yeah, you, and I was using a flip phone, so. With, uh, in the description, it says you had, uh, it was a close encounter with alien visitors. Did you actually see aliens? Uh, I never saw the alien until, uh, until after we started reviewing the pictures. And, and I was scared to death. I was hiding. <laughs> I wasn't looking for aliens, but I was fascinated by the size and the shape of this thing and the fact that I, it was that close and I couldn't see it all. They, they have some kind of stealth technology that uh, the, the, the surface of the ship is like a display panel. It shows you what's behind it instead of letting you see the surface of it, if you, if you can understand that. And, uh, and part, of the, part of the craft was disabled when the white light came on. And, and the white light, there was something staring out of the portal before the white light came on. I didn't see any movement in the light, but after we took the picture and we zoomed in on the light, you can clearly see there's something standing in the portal. And uh, even more amazing than that, about 10, 15 minutes later, I caught a, a half mile, it's, it's a half mile long mothership that came over that same location. It passed right over the top of my head. I got a 24 second video clip of that. And, and we've looked at that thing, and and we've been looking at it for two years, and we keep finding this stuff on it. We found dock ships. We found the alien buildings with alien architecture on them. And, uh, and now we're finding some creatures of all things. I don't know what. I can't imagine what a, any kind of a creature would be doing on the surface of a ship like that. But we're seeing things that uh, they look to us like creatures. Well, Ronnie, we're looking over your site on uh, YouTube here. And it's called Ronnie Dawson, and uh, Man Escapes Alien Abduction, and he has pictures to prove it. People, if they want to take a look at this story, we're going to grab a few uh, clips from here, share it right here at Third Phase Moon. But if you want to look into some more evidence that Ronnie Dawson claims that he's captured aliens peeking through a portal and a mothership a mile or a half mile wide, did you say, Ronnie? Yeah, it's a half mile wide, and it, it's kind of a V shape with a diamond center on it, and uh, it, it was absolutely huge. It, it took probably four seconds for it to pass over my head, and and it was in the bottom was solid stone. It looked like meteor impact craters on the on the bottom of it. I mean, it was a. Uh, I mean, there's no way that the, this couldn't show up on a radar that close to the Air Force Base. It it just baffles me that the news wasn't all over this. Uh, I'm just shocked, you know, uh, you know, and I caught a piece of it. I caught the left half of it on a 24 second video. And, uh, and ever since I've caught that video, I, I kept uh, expecting to see CNN news vans pull up in front of my house over here in Ranger, Texas. And it just never has happened. And, uh, I've turned the story in to Fox news, CNN, and, and nobody's even called to um, check up on this or even, uh, they, nobody's even looked at the pictures, much less talk to me about it. Well, what's interesting I tell you what, that's, is that's even cre that's creepier than <laughs> what I saw out there that night. Well, it's no surprise to me. The main media, they're not going to pick up on stories about UFOs and aliens because the only way they're going to do it is if they start to belittle it, tongue in cheek it, put a humor twist on it, and never take this thing kind of seriously. People on YouTube, they're a little bit more wise to this. They really don't care about what the main media is. Uh, you're going to shove down their throat in regards to their agenda, trying to put the tongue-in-cheek twist on this. But the YouTube viewers, it seems like they picked up on your uh, story quite well. You have over 147,000 views. You've gotten the word out. Congratulations. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, and that was that was the whole point, was not to try to make money off this thing, not to sell books or anything like that. Uh, I, I'm just trying to get the, get the word out there, man. I, I've got uh, some amazing photos. Here and this is a real deal sighting. And uh, as you know, as the disclosure was going on up there, they were asking people to come forward with, with real sightings and real evidence. And and I decided it was time. 
And I'd been doing a lot of research, you know, to back up because I knew everybody would say you're lying, you're making this up. So I've, you know, I've gone in there and I've, I've, uh, I've got some good shots of the star field in the background. I've identified the stars in the photographs. I, I've done everything I could do except to capture the radar images, which is out of my control. Well, it sounds like you've done your research. Now we're going to go into the first caller. You stand by over there in uh, Texas. Is there any, st- any okay. more? Uh, in your area going on right now, 952? Yeah, I'm, tra- I'm getting pictures here. I'm trying. You're giving it a shot. So basically, I'm giving it a the- shot. Send those photos in. We'll take a look. See if you can I get think- some foreground, Whoa. some trees. Yep. Yep. Okay, so sounds like you got it right covered now. over there. Basically, uh, third phase of moons taking reports from around the world. Everybody stand by. We're going to go to break, and we'll be right back in one minute. All right, we're back live, third phase moon. If anybody has any questions, they want to report their UFO sightings, they could call into 347-934-0378. We're going to get back to the man who claims he escaped alien abduction, and he has proof. Basically, he claims that there's he's captured 12 images of different species and aliens in several ships, a large mothership with smaller ships docked on it and the alien architectural buildings embedded on the base of the solid meteor. This event was reported by the major networks, and they never even checked it out. You know, this is the problem about people reporting their stories and it not being taken seriously over and over again. People will be ridiculed, lose their jobs just because they saw a UFO. Absolutely ridiculous. Can you tell me, uh, from Texas, Rodney, uh, Rodney, Mr. Yes. Dawson, what you felt when uh, you experienced this? Is it a, was it a one-time thing, or is this a constant thing going on? Well, you know, Blake, uh, we we were seeing them pretty regular, and uh, and it was fun and exciting and mysterious to try to record these things, and, and it was hard. You pull your camera out, and they just uh, they they blink out. You know, it's almost like you're watching them, but at the same time they're watching you. And it was really hard to get any footage to start with on them. And uh, and eventually, I, we were just seeing lights, and and finally, I saw the first craft. It was a, uh, it was over a rural farmhouse out here in the middle of nowhere, and and it was solid black, and and I thought it was like a, a cloud of smoke, like somebody was burning something, and then the, the four big white brown lights came on. That is that is typical of the, what we've been seeing out here, and and then it moved off, and and I was moving closer to get a photo, and uh, my camera wouldn't open because it uh, it just wouldn't open. I mean, uh, and so I, anyway, I, I bought this flip phone and, uh, and and then I decided, you know, we're seeing so many things that we need to do something besides just get photos of light in the darkness. You know, I'm just sick of photos of light in the dark. I wanted to do something different. I bought this green laser, 250 milliwatt laser. And, uh, and and I decided if, if I had the opportunity, I was going to fire this laser in close proximity to this thing and see how the, how the laser beam would react to the craft. And uh, but I didn't know at that time that just firing the laser beam at night will attract these things. I found this out later. And then I put the word out to everybody I could find. Uh, but I did. Uh, we thought we had a sighting, and I had the laser with me, and we shot the laser at this thing in close proximity of it. I circled it. And uh, we were looking for beam deviations, uh, and we didn't see any beam deviations. But uh, but apparently, one year after that was when the uh, attempted abduction happened, and uh, and they think that's probably a relation to me shooting the laser at their craft. Uh, that maybe they were tracking me, or they thought maybe I was uh, some kind of scientist or something. I don't know, but uh, I know it was a, it was a scary event, and. Uh, and I, you know, I was, I was, and I got some, I, I shouldn't have took so many pictures of the lights and the trees because I missed some great opportunities later. Uh, my run out of memory before the night was over. But the thing was, it, it was, wasn't just one random sighting. It was a whole bunch of sightings within a one hour period that night. Wow. And that night, like that evening was uh, quite the activity going on with UFOs and it was uh sound quite exciting and we're going to look forward to showcasing your videos right here at Third Phase Moon. We're going over your site right now, Ronnie Dawson. And uh basically there's another video here we 
delve into paranormal activity right here at Third Phase. We receive videos now and then when it gets into the paranormal realm of a ghost caught on tape that you've experienced. Can you tell us about this video? Yeah, I was, you know, I I was coming out with this UFO video. I had to get it out because there, there was a guy over in uh, Vietnam who was a, who had made a video of my story, and I felt like to get the story out there accurately, I needed to get it out there quick because this thing was taking off. So we had to make this video very quickly uh, without any practicing or warning. We just did something we did right there in the living room of my house. And uh, and during, during this video, one minute and 31 seconds into it, uh, and we didn't see it at the time we made the video. Uh, it was spotted by some YouTube viewers later. And uh, and there was a guy on YouTube who said, look, man, hey, uh, there's something going on in your video at 130, one minute and 31 seconds. So I backed it up and I looked at it and I said, my God, what what is that? Uh, there is a light that comes from the wall and, and, it, and it stops right above my shoulder. And then it looks like it shoots right into my, my head. And... Uh, and, this, and, and this, we had it in high def. We had a high def camera in a well lit room. <laughs> and I tell you what, and the higher def I looked at it, the creepier it looks. And you know, to this day, we can't explain what that was. There has been a lot of speculation as to what it was. Uh, they, I had one person say that it was a Kundalini. It, 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 it's a, it was a result of being in, in the close contact with a higher spiritual entity. And that, that, uh, this kundalini is like a, like God's kundalini would be the Holy Ghost. Uh, high spiritual beings have a kundalini that carries out their will for them, and uh, and, and they suggested that this that whatever I saw that night, uh, it was a higher spiritual entity, and this thing was coming back and checking up on me and seeing what I'm up to. Uh, but what it what it is like, I have no idea. But I guarantee you, it's in high depth, and you can see it really clearly in the video. Well, you know, I'm looking over some of the comments, Ronnie, and obviously people are going to say right away that it's you smoking a cigarette or something like that, some smoke vapor. What would you have to say to somebody that would uh, say that to you, Ronnie? <laughs> there's no smoking in my house, for one <laughs> For one thing. There's no smoking in my house. And, uh, and you can clearly see that the, the smoke travels, it travels quite a ways to... You know, before it gets to me, and then it sits here and hovers for a minute, and then it shoots rapidly into my head. And you can see it. And it spirals around, and then really draws to an intense point before it, it goes into my head. Wow, we're looking at the video right now. And uh, Ronnie, I really appreciate you uh, coming on Third Phase of Moon, sharing your incredible encounter with the mothership, alien beings out of portals. Ghost phenomenon. Wow, what else could uh, Third Phase of the Moon radio show want to showcase live right here? And then our friend from Minneapolis trying to capture incredible video. Having a hard time at it, but keeping our eyes on the skies. Continuously do, do so. Really appreciate everybody joining us right here at Third Phase of the Moon. Yes, it's been an honor. <laughs> 